Program support for Ask a Question, Save a Life comes from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, Garrett Lee Smith Memorial Act. This program is made possible in part by the Kim Foundation, reminding viewers there is help, there is hope, and there is healing for lives touched by mental illness. Learn more at thekimfoundation.org. Program support comes from Bryan Mental Health Services, offering hope and treatment for patients with mental health issues and their families. More information can be found at bryanhealth.org or by calling 402-481-5991. What is depression? Where do I get help? Do you know the warning signs? What should I do? It's okay to talk about suicide. Suicide of our military service members is at an all-time high. It is now surpassing the rate of the general population. Females attempt suicide three times more than males. Most individuals who are suicidal often display cues or warning signs. Older adults have a rate of suicide 50% higher than that of all other ages. Ask a question, save a life. Ask a question, save a life. Ask a question, save a life. Hello, I'm Dr. Dave Myers, Bryan Medical Center Mental Health Services Manager and co-chair of the Nebraska State Suicide Prevention Coalition. Suicide is a public health problem that impacts all ages. Suicide is preventable, and by becoming more educated about suicide prevention, the more lives we can save. There is a myth that says if we talk about suicide, it will give somebody the idea. This is indeed a myth. The best thing we can do is to talk about it. And by raising the question of suicide without shock or disapproval, shows the person that you are trying to understand their pain and that you're taking them seriously. Today's program is going to focus on suicide prevention in our elderly American population. Uh, I'm Pat Talbot and I was very suicidal. I am Jean and I have a sister who has uh, suffered from thoughts of suicide. I'm Dr. Steve Wingle. I'm a psychiatrist at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. I specialize in treating older adults, people 65 and older, that have a variety of mental illnesses. I was thinking about what difficult years those were and how very, very hard it was and how much I really thought I wanted to die but she was doing things to herself that would indicate, you know, she, and she would talk about the fact that she really just didn't want to keep living. So life was not good for her. Uh, she did not anticipate that it ever would be. And so there was a lot of despair and depression. So yes, it was, it was quite obvious. Uh, and uh, there was a part of me that's a little bit chicken, so I think that's part of what helped me not to commit suicide or make, you know, th those attempts. Um, but I, I'm just so grateful. Today she's a very uh, uh, useful, uh, happy, uh, dynamic person, but there were, it took a long time for her to work through that with the help of a lot of professionals. Well, there is a myth out there that, that um, talks about depression is a normal part of aging and that is just not accurate it's it's that there's nothing about it that's true certainly as people age the average person does think about death they think about um, what will happen when this physical life on this earth ends uh, that's natural but it's really not natural that people think about committing suicide about ending their own life I think it maybe becomes more prevalent uh, as people get older, depending on their circumstances, uh, older people, they, they, they lose family or get, get uh, further distance from family. They don't have the close ties and close relationships. They get lonely and so depression, I think, becomes more prevalent.
Family members can keep an eye out for changes, uh, especially changes in the way a person functions. So if an older adult used to be very socially active, very energetic, optimistic, and now they're kind of fretting about things that they normally wouldn't fret about. Uh, they feel kind of hopeless. They feel anxious for no apparent reason. Those can be warning signs of depression, and uh, I think those warrant investigation. Depression is a pretty easy thing to spot in people. Uh, because they withdraw, they don't want to talk, they don't, they don't want to have an interest in uh, anything. So it's an e easy thing to spot. Harder thing to confront. I mean, it's, it's not an easy thing to go to somebody that you know or love, a family member or friend, and say, hey, so it looks to me like something's wrong with you. Let's talk about it. Ask the question. I mean, don't be afraid to ask the question, are you thinking of hurting yourself? Uh, because when you ask that point blank, uh, of someone, it tends to make it more obvious to be able to answer answer that question and to realize and encourage and say, hey, you know, we couldn't do without you. Don't don't even think about going there. You know, we can find you the help you need and the support that you need. Asking somebody where your gut is telling you, I'm a little concerned about this person. I'm worried that they might be thinking about suicide. The right thing to do is to ask them, to overcome your own anxiety about it. It's hard. That's a hard question to ask somebody, whether it's a loved one or a friend, but it's the right question to ask them. You'll never really put the idea in their head. You might save somebody's life, on the other hand, if you do ask. This generation, the older generation, is a very proud, very independent group of people. And they have surmounted many, many obstacles, living through the Depression in some cases, living through world wars and so forth. Um, they have learned to be self-reliant, and that's good, but that makes it hard for them to ask for help. And it particularly makes, makes it hard for them to ask for help about things like mental illness. There is still a lot of stigma that society carries against mental illness. And some people, especially older people, might feel that admitting that they feel sad, admitting that they worry a lot, admitting that they feel hopeless, might be a sign of weakness. If I'm around somebody that I see like that, I, it's my obligation to try to talk to them and, and, and get them to communicate a little bit and, and then talk about the fact they don't have to feel this way if they don't want to. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't feel like you're alone. Uh, you know, people do care. You may not think that there's someone, you know, maybe next door if your family's far away or maybe those relationships aren't as close as what they used to be. Uh, but it's a tragedy uh, when anyone commits suicide, whether you're old or young, I mean, any age. The outlook is very, very good, and I've seen many patients that have gone on to live very vibrant lives after their depression is treated. I've seen people in their 80s, 90s, even people in people over 100 that have been treated for depression who have gotten better and have gone on to have high quality of life, really enjoy being around family and friends, and enjoy their remaining years. So there is much hope for, for people with depression. Life has a lot to offer. You may not think about it right at this moment, but life has its ups and downs, and there is life after depression. And I learned that myself, um, and in a very, very strong and important way. I mean, my life today is really good. Uh, I'm really happy to be alive. I'm grateful for life every day. Um, so don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Depression affects more than 6.5 million of the 35 million Americans aged 65 years or older and is the single most significant risk factor for suicide in the elderly. There is hope. Treatment works. It's important to connect elderly Americans to services that they may need and to help them build connectedness with family, friends, and the community. In today's program, we have heard about suicide in the youth, the military, and the elderly. One of the risk factors for suicide we have heard about is depression. Not all individuals with depression are suicidal. However, 90% of those who die by suicide had a diagnosed mental illness or would have been diagnosed most commonly with depression. Other risk factors include substance abuse, family history of suicide, hopelessness, impulsiveness, or aggressive behavior, barriers to receiving needed treatment, financial, social, work, or relationship loss, physical illness, and lack of connectedness. Warning signs include talking about wanting to die, 
talking about hopelessness or having no purpose, acting anxious or reckless, sleeping too much or too little, withdrawing of feeling isolated, uncontrolled anger, and dramatic mood changes. I am Dr. Dave Myers. If you are concerned about somebody, ask a question, save a life. It's okay to ask the person if they have thoughts of hurting themselves. Get help for mental, physical, and substance abuse disorders. If you know of someone who may be suicidal, restricting access to lethal methods of suicide like firearms is extremely important. Pay attention to the warning signs of depression. Connected us to family, to the community, and to friends saves lives. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. If you ever feel like you need to talk to somebody. If you're feeling suicidal. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Asking for help is a sign of strength. Please call the U.S. National Suicide Prevention Hotline. 1-800-273-TALK. Or visit your nearest emergency room. Ask a question, save a life. Ask a question, save a life. Ask a question, save a life. Thank you.